Hello, my name is Valor Stampo and I'm from Timbuktu. And my presentation is about the accurate digital data and how this uh, can solve a lot of problems. And when we started our project uh, several years ago, we thought that uh, if we could just measure the log file and we would know exactly how much uh, are there, then uh, the world in terms of timber industry would be ready that there is actually not much to do more. But what it turned out uh, is that actually the timber <coughs> measurement uh, has not only the volume aspect, but it also has uh, environmental aspect, it has a political aspect, it has a financial aspect, it has social aspect, and it also has a safety aspect uh, in the forest or in our roads. And uh, now I'm going to share some of our observations and solutions, how all those matters can be addressed. If I would, in, to the Estonian audience, I would uh, make a similar presentation uh, and the topic would be rural, then, then it would be safe to guess that uh, the farmers, uh, they have <coughs> forest land and the forest owners also have the farmland. But uh, just to be sure that I'm talking uh, or having the right focus, could you just raise your hand who have had direct uh, connection uh, timber industry or, or you have, uh, you own the forest land? Not much. But uh, how of you have kind of have an indirect relationship? Uh, you live in the forest or next to the forest or, or you depend on uh, what is going on in the forest? Much more. Thank you. And uh, timber measurement business is actually uh, quite uh, problematic because there are several aspects. First of all, it's very time consuming and it's expensive. Uh, why it's time consuming is that uh, by the traditional methods uh, it would take maybe several hours to figure out uh, uh, how much logs are there if you hand measure them. If you have uh, expensive measuring lines, it is a very big in initial investment. To build those measuring lines, and uh, there are only very few. Usually, they are in the sawmills. So the small forest owners, uh, they kind of uh, are in the mercy of the buyers. They can't uh, <coughs> control it, and uh, that's why the high uh, error of margin uh, might show up. And uh, this is kind of a common thing that uh, the error of margin could be plus minus five percent or even ten percent. And usually, the people who are selling forest. Uh, few times for their lifetime, they even don't notice it. They don't realize that they've been cheated. And for many situations, this is their business model for the buyers. And that's why this measurement uh, is a quite uh, inefficient uh, process, because uh, if you do it by the traditional methods, uh, you are not sure, uh, or you there is no possibility to control it. Uh, did you get it right or not? And to make those matters even more complicated is that uh, the rules of timber measurement, they date back to the 19th century. For example, on this picture, uh, this is made from, uh, this is made in North America. They used the formula what was created in 1857. And they still use it. And uh, to make uh, the matter even more complicated, they don't actually calculate the volume they calculate the, how many boards you can get out from that. And during 150 years, uh, the technology has changed so much that, uh, for example, from the top log, uh, what is on this picture, you could get uh, 150 years ago out uh, 10 boards. Now you maybe get 20 boards. But they still kind of calculate according to these 10 boards. So it's very difficult to explain this thing to the accountant. Or, for example, Russia, from St. Petersburg to Vladivostok. Guess what? Uh, who uh, established uh, the rules? How to measure the logs in, in Russia? It was Katarina II. She invited uh, Germans uh, to measure the logs uh, in St. Petersburg area. And uh, they made some calculations, and those calculations are still used, and they were used in the Soviet time. But all three species, from St. Petersburg to the Pacific Ocean, and also in Estonia, we have a temporary rule of Nielsen. It's been in power for 20 years, temporary. 
And uh, how does uh, we solve this problem? Timbetor is a smartphone uh, solution. It's uh, based uh, on the same idea that if I would make a picture of you using the smartphone, you all know that feature where the smartphone or tablet will recognize your faces. And we can even program the smartphone uh, to make a photo on that moment when you smile or not to make when your eyes are closed. And uh, the same idea is applied to our software. You make a picture of the pile and the software detects each and every log and measures uh, the diameter of each and every log. <coughs> and as you can see, you can get it from the Google Play and App Store, but about this, how you can get it uh, today uh, for free, I, can, I will tell you a little bit later. And what it means compared to the traditional methods. It is uh, 10 times quicker, it's five times cheaper, and it is uh, five times more accurate. And on the right side, uh, you can see uh, a lot of pennants with uh, what it can create. And uh, for example, the last one, uh, you might think that why uh, the safety is important. But in many cases, uh, the people who measure the logs, they use a ladder to climb on top of this pile, and uh, they just might fall down. So there are, there are many aspects just uh, not only the, the volume, but the working conditions, uh, and etc. And now this is a picture uh, how it works. You make a picture, and our software calculates you the, the amount of wood. And first of all, you have the location. In the present uh, world, today's world is very important to grow. Where did you get it? Not only the the sawmills or the forest owners would like to prove it. But also you, if you walk to the IKEA store and you would like to buy some very simple bed uh, for yourself or your, for your children, uh, there are certificates uh, what prove the origin of the wood, where it is coming from, and uh, is it uh, sustainably cut down and is this uh, forest replanted? And it's becoming more and more important than today's world. It's very, very difficult uh, or, or virtually impossible now to sell the logs uh, or the saw material what doesn't have that certificate. And our software makes it very easy for the forest owners or for the timber industry to track or to prove it that it was coming from that certain area. Then the second point is <coughs> the timber itself. You have the exact data, what timber it is, what formulas are used, uh, and uh, who was measuring it and when it was measured. And uh, the log diameters, because uh, for the sawmills uh, and for the wood manufacturers, uh, the diameters or the volume of the wood is uh, one of the most important criteria how to use those logs. In Estonia we have a lot of uh, measuring lines and uh, the industry is very concentrated. So the sawmill logs or the saw logs are most of them are measured digital. But this is not the case in many other countries. But uh, what is the kind of a case in, in Estonia is a bulk wood and fuel wood measurement. As you can see, there are there is a picture of the same truck before and after. And uh, how this uh, timber is measured. <coughs> Usually it is done this way that uh, the buyer would approach the truck which measures the height, width and the length of the logs. It will get this brutal volume with bark, with air, uh, with, and with the solid wood. And then he or she will multiply this uh, brutal volume with a pile density ratio or the stacking ratio. This is the percentage of the solid wood in this pile. We'd like to have a guess. Uh, what is the more or less average uh, percentage uh, of the solid wood on those trucks? I heard 65. Yes, if it, this is the saw box. But for the small diameter paper wood, it's about 50 to 52 percent. <coughs> so it's kind of hard to imagine that, uh, that uh, there is only 50 percent wood, more or less. And uh, 
it's a kind of a statistic of the 30% of the world. And the big buyers, they, they use that statistical average. And if you would sell them hundreds or, or thousands of trucks, at the end of the year, it might uh, kind of even up. But I would like to give this example that if we would be in the hospital and I would say that the average body temperature of all the patients are 36.8, uh, then probably somebody will die. And, and uh, what has happened now in Estonia is that the Estonian state forest has kind of established itself. And they have made uh, very strict uh, rules how to control those measurements. They unload uh, the trucks, they measure each and every log, and they have proven that, uh, that actually this percentage is 51 or 52. But from 50 to 51 in terms of percentage points, it's not two, it's actually four. And in the timber industry, 4% margin is very good. Uh, if you move a lot of uh, thousands of logs, you can make good money. But now there is a downside effect of this. Uh, the private forest owners, who got about 60% of the Estonian timber, and there are about 60,000 private forest owners in Estonia, we have a very fragmented market. Uh, they have now in the situation that uh, for them the stacking ratio has fallen to 48. So if the buyers are losing something uh, from the state forest, they, kind, they try to get even with the private sector. And uh, if you think that from 48 to 52, this is 4 percentage points in terms of the change, this is uh, 8 to 10 percent. And now, what we have developed is uh, the possibility that you make a picture and the software will circle all the logs and you would get this percentage in instance. It would take some 15, 20 seconds and you have a digital proof that uh, the logs were there and the stacking ratio was this and the volume was that. And uh, this uh, will create a lot of more uh, transparency and the fair competition among the buyers and sellers because there is another trick uh, what is used is that uh, the buyers they offer higher price but they're using the lower uh, stacking ratio so you think that you received more money but actually you didn't because uh, the volume is smaller, the price is higher, and uh, if, you, if you're lucky you don't understand it and you feel happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since usually I make those presentations uh, to the forest or timber industry people, uh, a little bit of the background of our program, it's a machine learning and uh, computer vision based algorithm, and we have trained our algorithm with more than 200 pictures. And what, what I mean with the picture is that, uh, uh, not, uh, not that picture, uh, but the uh, picture of each and every log. So in, in this picture there is uh, tens and tens of separate pictures. So we have used the 200,000 logs to insert to the, to the software to tell that this is log and this is not, this is log and this is not. And uh, thanks to this we have narrowed our margin of error to less than one and a half percent and it has taken us uh, several years of uh, constant improving and training and at the present moment uh, our biggest uh, users are Estonian and Lithuanian state forests and since uh, the timber industry is a very conservative business they uh, usually would like to have everything certified and legalized so the Lithuania was the very first country in the world to legislate the photo-optical measurement. And why it's not legislated in Estonia is because we are a too liberal country. So if, uh, for example, we agree with you that uh, we use in Tartu Brazilian formula, we pay in dollars and uh, the goods are delivered in Riga, nobody cares if everybody is happy. But there are many countries who would say that uh, no, you can use only that formula and, uh, and although you have a measuring tape, the person who has that measuring tape must be certified. So it's kind of a self-protection in this industry that doesn't allow uh, new people to enter that market. And all this data 
uh, we collect uh, into the, our storage module and uh, the users uh, have a real-time overview of what uh, has been measured, who has measured and, uh, and uh, where they have measured. And according to the, and since every country has uh, different rules or different free spaces, <coughs> it is possible for the users to adjust uh, their needs uh, or write their needs and demands into our storage module so they can use their own native free spaces and their own native formulas and assortments and defects and everything. So, and in the forest industry, uh, all the parties would benefit from this. But uh, now we have figured out that uh, actually this is not only the forest industry who will benefit uh, out of it, it's also the whole community. Uh, because uh, then the politicians will know how much is cut, uh, then uh, they would be maybe a little bit more careful about their statements are we cutting too much or too little? For example, today morning uh, in the first presentation we heard that uh, that uh, we are cutting roughly 10 million, but we could cut 50 million. But uh, the people who are very passionate about the trees, they would say that 8 million is absolute uh, absolute maximum. And as I mentioned, uh, all new technologies uh, what would challenge. Uh, the old technologies, uh, what are more than 200 years old, they need to be certified. And there are different authorities uh, here uh, listed uh, who have tested our software and who have approved uh, the way uh, we measure <coughs> the logs in, in our country or in their country. So as you can see, that they are all around the globe. And uh, now I would like to <coughs> to worst. <worse. coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and now I would like to introduce you very briefly how uh, we have integrated our system with the uh, systems of Estonian uh, state forest. So everything uh, starts in the forest. <coughs> Modern uh, harvesters, they have very exact uh, measuring systems and uh, they count and measure if they are right, uh, right correctly calibrated uh, all the locks and there is no doubt they do it good but during the process when the timber is moved out from the forest some of the logs they stay in the forest either they are sunken in the mud or under the snow or the border guys they don't just notice it, it happens and when the truck arrives it starts to load from that big pile. And uh, now there is one aspect. We, sh we need to know how much is in that pile to compare it with the data with the harvesters to be sure that there is nothing missing or if there is nothing stolen. Then if the truck driver is loading the truck, it makes the picture of the pile to calculate uh, the, uh, the pile density ratio. And that part of density ratio is the most important input uh, to the two key numbers what are important, uh, uh, the volume, and then uh, also the weight of the truck. And then, uh, well, not the truck, but the cargo, but it translates into the whole uh, cross weight of the truck. And then uh, this data is uh, transferred into Elvis, this is electronic vehicle system in Estonia, and why those uh, two uh, numbers are important in Estonia? First of all, Estonian state forest uh, would like to have the right volumes and uh, the right price. And also Estonian road administration and Estonian police would like to be sure that uh, those uh, trucks that are driving <coughs> around are not overweight. And uh, why this is important? If uh, you underestimate the value or the value of the pile density ratio, you could easily end up on the road with a machine that is too heavy. And uh, on the hot summer day, it starts to destroy the asphalt and also when it's spring or when it's autumn. And those poor truck drivers, if they be always told that uh, you have so little on the truck, they just un they are unaware that they load too much. Then the police is stopping them and uh, they would have very heavy penalties. And, uh, and they lose uh, about two or three hours uh, while uh, the police is uh, stopping them 
and testing uh, the trucks. And also the police is quite often making uh, the kind of useless work that uh, they measure the truck. It takes uh, one or one and a half hour. And, uh, and uh, the, the truck is on the weight limits. So, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are several issues uh, what can be tackled or, or solved with an exact uh, measurement. So, what I mentioned, there is an overweight trucks on the roads, then uh, there are tax frauds. Uh, because uh, the volume of timber, you can just squeeze it or, or pull it like a rubber. Uh, many people are quite creative. They use some shady schemes uh, to hide the origin of the uh, trees. Uh, they might uh, not declare uh, their volumes or they might claim back bad tax or many other things what uh, might happen. So it, it sums up that it creates unfair competition. Then this missing data about the cutting declarations, it creates that uh, problem that uh, some of the people we have at the moment, the uh, local municipal election coming, uh, and uh, this issue is again on the table, say that we are cutting too much, others say we are cutting too little, and we have nobody to ask because people don't, uh, don't report uh, and uh, they hide this information. And uh, poor information of the origin of timber. This is uh, again uh, creates uh, a lot of uh, double work or issues uh, to sell, uh, not to sell, but to sell it and to produce uh, from that material furniture or flooring uh, what is uh, suitable for the for the buyers who are uh, concerned about the origin of the wood. And now, in conjunction or in cooperation with. Uh, Police Ministry of Environment, Tax Administration, and Road Administration. We are now working on the fully digital supply chain of timber where all the data is digitally moved uh, and all the cargo is trackable. And, uh, and then the different parts, uh, like a tax department or the police uh, or the road administration, uh, they don't harass uh, those. Uh, people who are making their business uh, legally and uh, don't do any unlawful things. And the Minister of Environment uh, could have a better understanding uh, where and, uh, and what has been happening. So, again, there's a summary of, uh, of the positive things, uh, what we can generate uh, by Timberter and how those uh, positive aspects uh, can make uh, the life easier, not only for the timber industry, but also uh, for us, uh, for, or, or same for you, if you even don't, uh, uh, if you're not connected with this, for example, the road safety or, or the traffic jams or, or, or the better decision in your community level. And so the starting point uh, to start to collect this uh, data is just uh, first is the location, when it transported, what was transported, and the diamonds. And if you have all that data together, then you are very well equipped uh, to answer all those questions uh, what, what might arise uh, uh, during the transportation or uh, production or uh, in the supply chain and it is very easy to, to acquire our software it's available in, in Google Play or in App Store if you have a smartphone or a tablet that has at least 8 megapixel camera then just go to the Google Play or App Store type in Timbeter and if uh, our logo would show up then <coughs> it is uh, compatible uh, with your hardware. And uh, don't be kind of uh, hesitated if you see that you have only five measurements. Uh, if you contact me I can put you on free trial, uh, you can test it yourself, maybe you can show it to your friends or, or your colleagues or, or introduce this in your own. Thank you.
Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah. 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 I will ask you about your cooperation with Latvian state forestries. How you cooperated? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, we were last Friday. Uh, the question was that, uh, how good is our cooperation with uh, Latvian state forestry? And uh, it's very logical. Estonian state forest and Lithuanian state forest are our clients. And yes, we were last Friday about the same time in Riga uh, to meet uh, LVM people and uh, we introduced uh, our solution to them. And uh, our software will be, probably next week, will be available also in the Latvian language. and. Uh, we have a representative in, in Latvia, so if you would like to talk about Timbukur in your own language, just uh, send the email latvia at timbukur.com and, uh, and Kins uh, will contact you. Yeah, I have also one question. So it seems that uh, your product has a lot of potential in, in many, many countries uh, where there's a lot of forest. So according to your experience, what are the main obstacles in, in implementing it in other countries? Yes, you're right that uh, the, the round wood has the same round problem, problems all around the world. And uh, there are two obstacles. Uh, uh, for example, Sweden is a very difficult country. Because Per Erik has measured your wood for the last 40 years. You're so happy you don't want to know anything about the new things. So the countries what are very, very transparent. It's, they kind of say that we have no problems at all. And then there are other countries that are very corrupt. For example, in Brazil, the forest inspectors, they use machines, they wear bulletproof vests and they have machine guns. And also there are parts in, in uh, the ex-Soviet uh, uh, countries. Uh, for example, in Eastern Europe, uh, if the companies are have the Western shareholders, or maybe Japanese shareholders, about 10, 20%. Then they're open to discuss those things. But if they are belong 100% to the local capital, they say, no, we don't have any problems. And uh, the other, and also the kind of, uh, let's say, in Western Europe, or in North America, the people who are in the timber industry, they are about my age or or, or over. They are not so uh, uh, tech savvy. They know what this is. But they say that, oh, my grandchild has it. I have to take it away because he's ruining his eyes. Uh, let him play soccer outside or football. So the people who are 35, 40, 45 years old, they kind of, um, they have them, but they kind of don't feel comfortable to use it. But the good aspect about these people is that uh, if they start to like it, they don't act like uh, people who are 20 years old. Those who are 20 years old, they say, I like it, and they, they just Google, can I have the free version? Can I unlock this program? So, the honesty and the strong traditions are the aspects uh, what uh, kind of makes it difficult. But uh, at the moment we have a lot of traction also from those countries uh, where the pe people are using machine guns and, uh, and wearing bulletproof vests. So it's changing because this, those things, they are becoming the everyday part of our life. So three years ago, <coughs> monkeys were very common in the forest. Uh, now they are changed. They have touch screens. Okay. Thank you very much once again.